So you'll actually get a chance to hear this little beast in its first official outing. I've had it for a while, but this is official now. And in July with the our piano quintet's tour. And I might have a little surprise up my sleeve. This viola, it was made around 1610. We don't quite know because nobody really dated, but they know by using dendrochronology, a forensic science technique to work out the age of the wood. And this is the youngest piece of wood that on the table, the top, and it is dated um, 1591. So that shows that, it's, that the wood is you know, old enough for Magini to have put it together because he died when the plague came through. He came from Brescia, which is northern Italy, and he was a pupil of Gaspar de Sala. And these are the, the grand, he's the grandfather of, of the Brescian school of making. This is really a very, very fine instrument. And you can see this beautiful spruce on the top here. The grain is quite wide, which gives it this sort of tiger look, which I quite like. Um, usually you find this sort of with grain on a, on a cello or something, not on a viola, but um, it certainly just doesn't seem to affect the tone. And all these little scratches and marks, like when did that happen? Was that, did that happen in the 18th century or the 17th century? It is incredibly mellow, but under the ear, it feels like I'm driving a Ferrari. But I know what's going out there into the hall. It's this rich, full tone, plus a bit of that bite that the Italian instruments have. As far as the sound of the orchestra is concerned, imagine 17 Ferraris revving up. That'd sound pretty good, wouldn't it? A couple of Porsches. Hum, hum bees over there in the bass section. Wouldn't hear the Toyota, would you? <laughs> in playing it, you, you find something new every day. And, you know, it took me seven years to get used to the Smith that I had and w work out how to drive it. And this one, it's been driven for 400 years, so it's a little easier to drive once you get the hang of it. So that's, I guess, from a player's perspective. When we were looking for these instruments, I'm naturally cynical about, about these things. So I always have, I'm always pretty standoffish about the whole idea and, and I didn't ever believe that it would be true that I would be, you know, be the custodian of such a, an amazing instrument. And now it's just, it's just become part of my life. I think we're meant to be together. <laughs>